Welcome to Film Vets, a podcast by veterans about movies, TV shows, and nerd culture. I'm your host, Paul, and with me is my co-host. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was taking a nap. Um, hey, I'm Dan. <laughs> Thanks for coming back to the world of the living. All, all of this will be completely relevant later, I promise. Yeah, we'll see. Uh <laughs> So today, uh, we're going to start things off a little different for this podcast and talk about an actor that changed my viewpoint of actors. And, you know, we, we as people can, you know, looking on the outside can be very cynical of actors and, and the things that they do. But this person challenged that. And uh, his name is Jimmy Stewart. James Stewart. Yeah, he, he definitely took personal like responsibility to a whole new level. Like, he, he, he stood up when he he felt he needed to. Yeah. I think that the number one thing I always come back to when I think of Jimmy Stewart is earnestness, not just in the believability of his characters, but also his character. And just the fact that when I see something like Mr. Smith goes to Washington, I mean, it just pulls at my heartstrings because I really do feel like he is speaking from his heart in those scenes. And, uh, you know, you go to it's a wonderful life. That's another movie that you, you cannot, deny the earnestness of Jimmy Stewart. So, uh, yeah, I just, I think the reason we're going to bring him up to, we're bringing him up today is because he's a veteran and he is somebody who challenges our sensibilities and what it means to be an American. Jimmy Stewart volunteered to be in the military during World War II and became a military pilot. The crazy thing about that was he also said he was very demanding to see combat. Yeah, that's that's that is true. Um, I I guess he ended up getting kind of stuck for two years stateside, even though he kept insisting that he be sent overseas to join the combat. And in November of 1943, eventually he was dispatched to England, where he participated in more than like I think it's 20 combat missions over Germany. Wow, what movie stands out for you from him? I mean, it's it's always it's a wonderful life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the one that, every that one watches I mean, every year almost i think at a certain point you can actually connect with the despair in that movie on on such a different level and i think it's because he was he was going through a lot mm -hmm. during the filmings of, of certain movies after his you know post service that he was able to reference and pull from and it, it just made it almost heartbreaking to watch well from what i've gathered he had ptsd from world war ii and then his first role was It's a Wonderful Life. So I, I think, and and they didn't have PTSD as a thing back then. Uh, they didn't know what it was. But I think that affected the film in, in another way, you know, and brought out another side of him. Uh, something that I, al oh, yeah. something I always go to is uh, Rear Window. Because not only is... Oh, also <laughs> a classic. Yeah. Uh, not only is it, I mean, Alfred Hitchcock, one of the greatest film directors of all time, but Jimmy Stewart is in a wheelchair for the entire movie, unable to get out. Uh, he's stuck in one place. And to be, you know, you have to act without mobility is he's genius the way he does it. I mean, I was riveted the entire time. And he, of course, he was able to, you know, do things, but not without being in the confines of the chair. So that that was really interesting. Really cool stuff. Well, uh, do you, did you ever did you ever hear about his... Uh his awards that he got from, from his combat missions. No, but, uh, why don't you, why don't you tell us? <laughs> Basically he, he managed to earn a distinguished flying cross with two Oak leaf clusters among other honors. But I think that was the highest honor that he had received up to that point, but it, it made him the most decorated actor to participate in world war two. Wow. I mean, to, to take, your life upended to go serve in the military when you are in a place of just comfort and you don't have to worry about the world really affecting you. It's, it, you know, what it reminds me of is, is, uh, well, to a certain degree, uh, Adam driver who volunteered to be in the military after nine 11. Oh yeah. We should, we should save one for him later. Though. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, like, like we could talk volumes on Adam driver too. Yeah. He, he's had an interesting he's the first, journey. Yeah. He's uh he's the first person that comes to mind uh, comparatively to in that, in that sense, as far as uh, the rest of his filmography, uh, we could go all day. I, uh, Harvey, where he, Philadelphia, uh, story. Philadelphia story, um, 
I, I mean, the list goes on and on. Do you think it was awkward being in the military serving while also being so renowned? I, I can imagine just no. walking around and, and people just looking up to you. But it was a different time, I, you know? I think that his sense of duty to to his to his country to you know in in world war ii it was a little bit i I don't want to say easier because i don't think it was necessarily easier but it was there was definitely a defining line of what was a sense of right and wrong you know obviously at a a certain point everybody realized oh nazis not good (laughs) um so you know like when when he reached that point then it, it, it was just easier to recognize i have to do this and you know any of those awkward you know interactions that he might have were probably washed away with you know hey we're brothers in arms that's true you know and also a big fact that uh i just found out he rarely spoke about his wartime service so yeah no so the fact that he served this time and of course stayed in the reserves after the fact but never bragged, never talked about his time. And maybe maybe something bad happened. Maybe not. Maybe he just felt like that was a time and place that he needed to keep in his memory. But that's that's pretty amazing. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Have you ever seen the recruitment video called Winning Your Wings? I, I haven't I haven't seen that. It's interesting. It's uh it's Jimmy Stewart talking to oh well, he's talking about the military and what you'll achieve and what you'll do. And he's very cheeky in the video. It's very fun to watch. And he's just, he's just so earnest. He's, he's just, that's the, that's the key word to Jimmy Stewart, earnest, you know, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, he's fun to watch even then, uh, it just a recruitment video, you know, um, I highly recommend checking that out. Yeah. I, I, I'm very excited to watch more of his films. I don't feel, I feel like I've only seen it like a, a small iceberg of his filmography. Cause he has just, it, it goes on. The list goes on and on. And, uh, I'm sure there's people out there. You know what I recently saw that was really great was the man who shot Liberty Valance with John Wayne. And that film was just so well done. What can you say? It's John Wayne, but the reason the film really works is Jimmy Stewart. Oh yes. And, uh, I can't recommend that film enough. So, so I've, I've got a, just kind of an off the wall, fun, fun fact. And I guess it's more fun for me than, you know, might be fun for you. (laughs) Sure. But did you know he, he, his hometown is Indiana, Pennsylvania. (laughs) I did not know that. Oh my God. That is, it is two hours and 40 minutes from where I grew up. Wow. Dude. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, that that is that's nuts. I didn't I didn't put it together until I was researching some stuff for him. And I I had realized that he he was just shortly outside of Pittsburgh, like maybe 40 minutes outside of Pittsburgh. Small world, man. Yeah, it's nuts. (laughs) So, I mean, he's he's a Pennsylvanian. That explains a lot about you, actually. You have you have yeah. a very I'm not I'm not trying to joke. I'm not trying to make a, a joke of that. I, I just I really think you have an earnest sensibility as well. And it, it I, I maybe that's something that some people there have a lot. You know, like you think of Southern hospitality. That's something that on some level I have as well. So but um, I think it's cool, man. Uh, you, you sure you're not related to him? I'm pretty sure. Although <laughs> the year I was born, they also erected um a statue in his hometown. Oh, cool. Um, for his 75th birthday. <laughs> oh, wow. That is sick. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 pretty, pretty interesting. I, I kind of want to go back there just to see the statue and visit his hometown now. I think uh, I think he's one of the few people I can watch with my grandmother <laughs> without her getting yeah. angry or something. <laughs> no, she's fine. <laughs> If you could pick one movie off the beaten path that you would suggest me or, or anybody listening to watch of Jimmy Stewart, what what would you suggest them to watch? That that kind of just captures the spirit of Jimmy Stewart. Mm, that's that's a great question. That's a hard like, question. Like his to acting answer. chops and well, like, yeah. I, I mean, you I, could... I've got the hard hitting questions. <laughs> I mean, I I definitely would go into his earlier films if you want to get a sense of this type of actor, what, what he brings to the table, not to say his later films are not great. It's just, you know, it's a great way to introduce you to 
what he is capable of. I guess the easy one is just to say, you know, uh, my it, it's a wonderful life. And uh, that would be true, but I, I just feel like there's something else that would lead people in a little more. And I think that's Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. I think that I not, not only from a the viewpoint of being a patriot and, and being somebody who brings out the best of what it means to be an American, but it's just a it's just a riveting film. I mean, I always go back to the scene where he's filibusting and it's just really moving stuff. Oh, I, I know. Yeah, I know that scene. I yeah. know that scene really well. That's a good one, too. Yeah. Um, Me personally, I, I'm going to go the opposite way. And did you know Jimmy Stewart wrote poetry? I did not. Yeah, he, he actually in, in 1989 made a book called Jimmy Stewart and His Poems. Oh, wow. Um, it, it's it's just a, a thin book of of a bunch of his his poems but there's one specifically called Bo. it's about his late dog and man that is that is a tear tear inducing poem uh, it, if anybody has any moment to just sit down and a, a few minutes for a good cry go read that that poem i had no idea he wrote poetry that's that's amazing yeah i mean like it, the the more you kind of peel back on there's on, there's so many you know, layers the I service mean, yeah exactly there's there's really not any uh, limit to this man. I mean, it goes on and on. And, and the fact that he went out in his life without overarching um, problems, you know, and, and nothing that stands out as being volatile, you know, uh, really says a lot mm-hmm. about him. Yeah, he he uh, he was definitely a very, very interesting point of study. Just the, it all started with his military background and, and I was excited to see kind of what he did with there, but then it just kind of branched off in in crazy ways yeah i i really strive to be more like him as an actor because i just want whatever i do to be earnest i want it to be real and i want it to come across as something genuine and you have to take that in and and what better way than watching jimmy stewart work you know oh yeah he was born in 1908 he he passed away in 1997 wow 97 97 89 years old that's, yeah that's, that's that's a good life man. that's great yeah. yeah i honestly didn't think i was making it past 27 so i'm pretty happy where i'm at right now <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh thank you for listening uh on our segment on jimmy stewart i i really enjoyed learning more about him and i hope you got some stuff out of it and you know look up more of his films and Take or poems. Away, or poems. Or read his poems. Yeah, no. for sure. Yeah, I really enjoyed talking about him. I, I'm really excited to do more segments on veterans in the entertainment industry from the past. And, of course, we'll do people who are still alive and or modern stuff, you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it wasn't intentional to be like, uh, you know, uh, we're only doing people who are past, you know. <laughs> That's not, not where we're going. No, this, this, is, this is pretty pretty open. And, in fact, if you're a veteran and you're in the industry, if you want to uh hop on and and, and have a chat with us uh, about your your service and in your journey um looking at you adam driver <laughs> we can get adam driver on the show that they i i think that would be amazing the sky's the limit man. as long as he doesn't force choke man well, i mean it'd be worth it i mean i i i'd, I'd be down for a little bit a little light <laughs> force choking just make it weird well i didn't know we were you know? getting into that today um so <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, this leads into my next little thing I want to do is a shout out to VME, Veterans and Media Entertainment. They're a great way for veterans across the United States and the world to connect with other veterans in the entertainment industry. VMEConnect.org, I believe. I'm going to double check that because I don't want to give you the wrong information, <laughs> people. But I really recommend it's changed my life. It's changed a lot of people's lives uh, to find others in the industry and just create content or do, you know, whatever, you know, uh, yeah. VME, VME connect.org. Highly recommend. Awesome. I might have to look into that. You should. Yeah. You, you would, you would, uh, benefit greatly. <laughs> yeah. If I can do it, you can do it. If Dan can do it, the, you definitely all the other can. people out there. Uh, okay. <laughs> Dan, there's a comic book that came out many moons ago that I grew oh, yeah? up with that I was obsessed with. Was it a Neil with. Gaiman one? You know, it might have been a Neil Gaiman book. Yeah. Oh, um, man. I'll have to say, though, I did not finish the entire series run, but The Sandman 
is something that was recently released on Netflix, and we both got to watch it. Isn't that right? Oh, man, I had all kinds of feelings about that show. Mm. And most of them were positive. <laughs> I, I would say most of them. I mean, I can't think of any uh, negative ones at the moment, but mine, mine was, it, was the fact that it ended. That was negative. That, <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been talking up this show for a, a while now, uh, ever since it dropped. And uh, I've had some people say, I don't know. I don't know and, and then they watch it and they're like, oh, my God, that was amazing. Uh, <laughs> it, it's almost like it's just a different kind of show to me. It's yeah, it's so it's. It, can you can you give some information Crazy. on what the show's about? Well, um, it is about a man, or actually a no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 a it's about a character named Dream of the Endless. He he is essentially the Sandman, and you know I'm not going to really give anything away yet, but I'm going to warn you right now, spoilers, if you really don't want to walk into any spoiler territory, now's the time to turn it off. I'll yeah, we'll, give you a minute. we'll try our best not to give any spoilers throughout this, but I, I do oh, want no, to talk about it. I make no it. promises. Yeah, I, 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 I want <laughs> to like, say, if that's the case, we'll just say spoilers, because, you know, the show's been on for a while, um, and uh, we'll, we'll keep away from the big stuff, but I think throughout, we're, we're going to just mention a couple things. Uh, what was the, what's the story about, Dan? <laughs> essentially the sandman gets captured and gets stuck for a long duration of time i'm not you know gonna give out too many details because that plays into the story but when he finally gets released he is so weak that he's got to go around and, and collect whatever items were stolen from him and there's there's some additional characters that will surprise a lot of people one specifically <laughs> it's hard without spoilers. I know, I know. So, uh, a, something a, a very... A man and his bird go for a walk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, that, that should have been the... Uh, I mean, yeah, you sold. You had me. You had me at bird and man. <laughs> something that a lot of people probably don't know about the show, including you, is that it's very steeped in DC mythology. Uh, so, the characters, especially if you uh, get to the diner scene with... Uh, the uh, John D character. That character is actually originally in the comics, a supervillain. So what Neil Gaiman did was he took the character from the Justice League and had him put in Arkham Asylum. I, well, he, I think, believe he was already in Arkham Asylum. He just, he played with that and made him into a Sandman villain. I thought that was really fascinating. And there's a lot of little things hmm. like that. There, there's a point in the, the show where uh one of the kids, uh, you know, he's dressed up as a superhero and it looks a lot like the one from the comics. So I thought that was really cool. But they decided, it seems, from the show to tone down the connections to the Justice League and things like that. And honestly, for the better, I, I, it just gets convoluted at that point. Uh, I'd rather just be about Dream, his journey and the encounters he has to gaining his power back and finding people that he needs to confront and things like that. I thought that was really fascinating. Now, it's something about a lot of people don't care for Sandman, it, you know, right off the bat is maybe it doesn't have enough action or it's too slow. I, I didn't feel like it was at all. Uh, I was riveted the entire time. I have to say my personal favorite episode, and I have to I have to say this is like one of the best episodes I've ever seen on TV. One of is episode six, "The Sound of Her Wings," uh, in which oh, that is a beautiful, beautiful yeah. Episode. He's he's visited by his sister Death. He goes along with her on her work where she gets souls, and you know it's just beautifully done. There, there's also the second half of that episode where Death and him are shown to be, you know, younger, quote unquote. Uh, they're they're back in the past. And uh, I, I forget the year. It's like the 1800s, I think, or 1700s. Uh, forgive me if I'm off, but uh, they meet a man who wants to live forever. He doesn't want to die. And so they grant him that wish. Dream comes back to the same bar that he found him in every hundred years to see if he still wants to live. And it's just so cool because you get to see, you know, he gains this family and wealth and then a hundred years go by and he's lost it all and he still wants to keep going. <laughs> It's it's fascinating. I, I think I think that that's awesome. It's like the ultimate in like buddy drama. Yeah, like, 
Oh, man, you get to the end of that episode and, you know, when Dream says, I couldn't miss out on seeing my friend and it just, oh, wow. Oh, you're not going to do the voice? What kind of friend would I be? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. That's my that's my dream voice. I think you nailed it. (laughs) David Thewlis? Yes. One of my favorite characters from Harry Potter, by the way. I I was just about to throw out there. Did. Did you realize that he's he's just magical? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's just he's he's perfect. And to get him in that role, uh, the, I, I'd say the second best episode of the series was the diner episode for me personally. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the, that was definitely the second. Um, well, I guess for me, it would be the third because I liked the the guy coming back every hundred years. And I liked the death episode. Like I, I, I thought well, that's the same episode. My... So that that's the same episode. So uh, Sound of Her Wings includes both the uh, introduction of death and the. Oh, then, yeah. Hands down. The best the friend. Second best. The six. The one, diner yeah. one is the second best. Yeah, the second best. I forgot is... that they were together because that episode is so full of stuff. Yeah. That it, it makes you feel like you watch two episodes in one. Your mind is blown. Well, like something I don't know so if you balanced. got to see that they actually dropped a bonus episode. I did not. Oh, yeah. Uh, so there is a actually I just I started reading Sandman. I wanted to get through the entire series and I read these stories that they just released. And I was like, as I was reading the stories, I was like, how the hell are they going to do this? How are they going to pull off? Because I, again, spoilers, you know, I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to get into spoilers, but one of the episodes is called a dream of a thousand cats. And I'm like, how the mm-hmm. hell are they going to pull off this? Because they have basically talking cats, you know? <laughs> uh, of course, the first half of the episode is that, and it's animated, which is ah. bro. It's brilliant because I mean, come on, how are you going to, wrangle cats and the cat's lips don't move you just you have the camera on them and you they talk uh so they communicate that way which i think it works a lot better in my opinion um and such a great story but the the second one is called uh calliope and it's about this muse who is uh stolen and put into slavery basically to give men to give men the ability to write great stories so it's it's fascinating stuff and sandman shows up in both of them for different reasons uh actually he shows up as a cat in the first one <laughs> so uh, oh, i can't wait to see it yeah it's excellent stuff and uh the, what the, the thing about the series that i think it has so much potential for is not only the fact you have this serialized story going from episode one through ten but episode 11 excuse me episode 11 really shows that the potential of just contained stories is there. So you have a uh, anthology as well that you can do, especially with a character that traverses time and space and can do pretty much anything. I, it, there's so much potential. It's so great. And I'm so glad that the numbers are huge for the show. Oh yeah. I, I would be heartbroken if it didn't have a season two. No. It, and uh, I got Tyler to watch the first episode. I forced him to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ty- Tyler's my buddy. I'm hoping I'll get him on the show soon. Uh, he's he's a fellow filmmaker and uh, not a veteran, but uh, you know he's uh, he's an honorary veteran <laughs> to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's seen some stuff. He's seen stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, Sandman, are you looking forward to season two? Oh yeah. Do you oh, do you have yeah. any returning characters that you would want to see or any storylines to pick up? anything because i i haven't i I actually know a couple of things that might happen but well i'll tell you straight up one thing uh you know the show lucifer right oh yeah yeah did you ever watch it no okay (laughs) i know (laughs) i'm keeping up my i'm keeping up my tradition of not seeing things no 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 it's no big deal so media no it's (laughs) (laughs) it it keeps you on your toes uh so the thing is bliss the thing about the show Lucifer is the devil quits his job in hell to live on earth and become a, you know, live amongst humans, basically. That's actually from the Sandman. So what happened? Really? Yes. You know, he gives up hell and gives the key to dream. And I don't know if they're going to be able to do that in the show since that's what happened in 
the TV show Lucifer. So I, it'll be interesting to see what Lucifer does, if it's the same thing or something new. Uh, personally, I don't care if they do the same thing again. Yeah, it doesn't They could matter always do something new. Because that, that sounds more like that was an, let's call it an homage, but you know, rip off. Well, it, it, it was, it was the same form. It was the same quote unquote character like they they took. Nah. Yeah, I know. Uh, but personally, <laughs> I don't care. I, the show was a whole different thing. It didn't include Sandman. It's fine. Either way, I think that that story thread will be interesting, uh, especially since Lucifer's kind of pissed at him for, you know, humiliating her. So that's one storyline. And the other one is the which is actually kind of intertwined is the woman who was in hell for thousands of years because of him that he couldn't oh, yeah. forgive. Yeah, I, I really can't wait to see where that goes, uh, because that's another story thread that will be picked up, I'm sure. I really want them to come back to the friend, the hundred year friend. He does show I up do again too. in the comics, but not in the way you think. There's one storyline in particular, and they they touched on it in the show with that character was when he met Shakespeare. And there's a whole oh, that was awesome. Yeah, there's a whole thing, a whole um, which I think the first half of an episode they could do with this where he brings in <laughs> it's uh, he does. He, he's told Shakespeare how to make Midsummer Night's Dream. And he wrote the play with Shakespeare or, or gave him the play. I can't remember. But he actually brings the real versions of those characters to watch the play for the first time. So th I hope that happens. That would be amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. I hope yeah. they do that. I hope they kind of revisit that mm -hmm. um, because they, they did. They put a, a very interesting emphasis on him sitting there at the table with the one guy that he, he's allowed allowing to live. And he just kind of takes notice in, in good old Bill. Um <laughs> and then he like hops up and just shimmies over and starts talking to him and they walk away. I, I want to yeah. see what happens more of that. Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. Uh, great. Uh, so Sandman, that's uh, that's our view. Uh, five stars or whatever. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm okay, five, five, five out of five. Five out of five. Five out of five. five. Uh, five out of five uh, talking ravens. How about that? There we go. <laughs> uh, so the next thing we watched, uh, we're going to bring up a couple more things here before we go. But uh, She-Hulk watched the first episode. Oh, that was just downright fun. It almost didn't feel long enough. That's how much fun I was having. I have to say, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's definitely a first episode feel. And you get. Oh, the, yeah. It's an origin story. It's fine. I, I think they're leading into the next big stuff, you know, and, and that's fine. But I had I had no problem with the CGI. A lot of people complain about it from the trailers. I didn't care. I was I was so engrossed with the story that I just I, I was laughing so much and having so much fun watching the dynamic between her cousin and, you know, the Hulk and her. And uh, it's funny, though, my mom hates She-Hulk. And I don't know why. Why? I don't know. Oh, she, well, just that like, defeats my question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was your question? <laughs> I said, why? And you're like, I don't know why. Oh, well, <laughs> what, I asked her. She's like, she looks stupid. I'm like, well, she's a she-hulk. I don't know what you want. <laughs> Is she greenest? She's a greenest. Yeah. Doesn't like she's green greenest. people. Gotcha. Well, she likes the Hulk, I think. But I... I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, Mom, why do you say that? I just do. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess when he, when She Hulk smashes, it might be a different thing. I, I, I don't. I, I don't know. Yes. I one of my favorite things about the show was the fact they brought up Steve Rogers' virginity. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> the end. The end like credit that, scene was perfect. <laughs> that was. Oh, Actually, I didn't see the end. I didn't see the. Oh, the, scene every e every episode will have an after credit scene. So check that out. OK, see, yeah. I, I I managed to like I watched it all the way up to right before the show. Um, so it's fresh in my mind, but I didn't get far enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. Uh, I won't spoil it, but it, it does go back. It circles back to that whole conversation they were having in the car. That's all I'll say. And also oh, okay. fun thing. Fun fact, Chris Evans actually responded to it <laughs> on uh, Twitter. So pretty fun stuff. Uh, <laughs> She-Hulk. That's uh, amazing. I'm, I'm really 
excited to see where it goes. I've been, I've, I've liked most of the Marvel TV shows that have come out so far. My favorites are Loki, WandaVision, uh, and Moon Knight. So uh, I'm really excited oh, to see loved, where it goes. I loved Loki. Oh yeah, Loki was, was fantastic. Great. Fantastic. Uh, I mean, just just the character of Miss Minutes alone makes that show. But uh, yeah, it's and, great and stuff. And that was Tara Strong. Yeah, it was Tara Strong. Yep. That, that woman, that's so cool. There's nothing that woman can't do. I swear to God. Uh, so She Hulk. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think there's going to be a lot of good stuff to come out of it. I mean, certain Daredevils are going to show up at some point, so that's going to be cool. Woo! Yeah, yeah, the return of Daredevil. Um, a, a fun little fact, though, I think they mentioned that they are going to be lightening up Daredevil. I, and some people might have a problem with that. I don't care. I've I've read the comics. The guy can be funny. You know, he doesn't well, have to be. He's supposed to have a sense of humor. That's called oh, yeah. being human. Yeah. If I, was, <laughs> if I was, you know, dark and brooding all the time and didn't have a sense of humor. We're going to talk about the Batman. Nobody v. would want. We're oh, going to talk okay. about Batman v Superman <laughs> one day, because that is exactly the the thing that I have a problem with is just this. The fact that you have these two so dark dry. and brooding characters. We'll, we'll talk about it another time, but <laughs> um, She-Hulk. Yeah. OK, so let's move on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The new news about uh, the uh, <laughs> the ongoing saga of Ezra Miller. Speaking of DC train wrecks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, DC, man, they cannot get it together. I, I, I really I, you hope know what? they can. What, what blows my mind is the parent company at the helm of DC is Warner Brothers. Sure. So they can make they like Warner Brothers put the Sandman together and it's gorgeous. It's yeah. it's just damn but it's, near flawless. But it's TV. Well, so then what they could do is just dip their toes into the TV pool. Well, to just get that little inflatable kiddie pool and sit in that for a minute and think about what they're doing. <laughs> so, you know, uh, like David Zaslav, together. the Zaslav axe, as they say, is coming down. Uh, he is. I mean, we talked about the Batgirl movie being on the chopping block. Um yeah, that there's some. Me, I'm still mad that I, I I want I want my Firefly. Yeah, uh, I think I think though uh, when it comes down to it, there's going to be some big changes, and it's not going to be you know I I highly doubt the Snyder universe is going to last. I think that everything's just going to be re reorganized, and they're going to have a new ten year plan, and it's just going to be something completely new. But anyway, getting back to Ezra Miller. They, yes. yeah, they uh, apparently came out and I I think it was through their uh, representation, I believe, uh, that they are apologize. They're apologetic and they are working on themselves and getting help. So I thought that was a good sign, uh, but also a little too late in a lot of ways cuz yeah i like there's an awful lot of damage that happened yeah um like there if 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 you've even mildly been paying attention to the whole saga it's it's going to take a it's a long road to get confidence back yeah i can appreciate that he or they i'm sorry i'm still new oh, it's to fine. the to, we to, we, to we do so need we probably should acknowledge that uh one of the podcasts we recently did we mentioned that uh we, we totally screwed up ezra miller's pronouns and uh that's something we're trying to do better so uh thank you for whoever that person is that listened and mentioned that <laughs> uh but we will be uh we'll be keeping an eye on that from now on yeah i'm gonna try to be more conscious of, yeah, yeah. of stuff like that but but you know, they really just kind of went on a, a a real spree. <laughs> like, well, you know, there's it, it's interesting. There's other and... there's other celebrities who went through that and uh, have come out on top. I mean, we think about Robert Downey Jr. Or oh uh, yeah, he he yeah. had a, a drug problem. 
Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I could just stick with Robert Downey Jr. as a comparison. I mean, the man couldn't get but any there... lower than he did. And yep. when he turned it around, Iron Man, you know, that, that it's such a big comeback story and people want a comeback story. Why not? You know, but the problem with Ezra Miller is that they are not just harming themselves. They've apparently harmed others in other ways. Right. Uh, and know. that's that's what makes it. Yeah. Pretty appalling. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm glad they are getting help, but it's still like I I don't really have a desire to watch the Flash movie, and I it really yeah. bums me out because I know that you know all of the people that put the work in. I'm still going to watch the, it, but the heart yeah, that it's in. harder. It's harder to watch it now, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, then, then I might watch it, and every time he's on screen, I'll, or I'm sorry, and I they, think that's, every time they're on screen, I'll just have disdain. And I think that's why we need to talk about it. Uh, it, it. It affects movies. It affects the films that we watch. Otherwise, I don't really want to talk about the gossip stuff. You know, that, that I don't you care. Know, how ironic is it if, you know, you know, uh, and I'm talking about multiple actors go, like, they... You know, they act as a superhero or or anything to that effect. You know, great power comes great responsibility, right? And then they turn around and go on like a 12-week bender. It's like, you're missing the point. <laughs> uh, you know, it's maybe they watch The Boys. <laughs> maybe. Like, that's how you're supposed to act. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think, I think Carl Urban's got it. Like... Like, <laughs> yes, that guy, man, <laughs> that I could, guy. he he is just so great in that role. And I mean, Carl Urban's just he's great oh, in everything. Yeah. Come on. He was, he's bones in J.J. Abrams reboot of all she left me was with my bones. Yeah, <laughs> that's good <laughs> stuff. Um, I remember the first time I saw Carl Urban was in um, Lord of the Rings. And I was like, man, this guy's good. Oh yeah, he was yeah. great in that. Yeah. So yeah, uh, hopefully they get the help that they need, and I, uh, I hope so. Yeah, and they, I I hope above all that the film that all these people worked so hard on can get released, and uh, you know be seen. Because it just I mean, sucks yeah. that it, it it you know a film like Batgirl with all these yeah people I was gonna say if we're gonna bark shelved. up that tree then yeah then then Warner Brothers needs to just bite the bullet and release Batgirl just release what you got show your hand and then just start over yeah. just just stop start over Unf but I think it's unfortunate everybody put their heart into it Let yeah us see it it's unfortunate that it it's come down to a tax write off. That yeah, you, that's, you imagine that's stupid. you put your heart and soul into something. You've you've spent half a year to a year working on a project only for someone to say, no, we're going to tax write it off and no one's ever going to see it. That sucks. See, that's that's a that's really terrible, terrible feeling. Like, it is. That's and uh, even if the and film if anybody's does seen get the producers, that's springtime. For <laughs> <laughs> even if that film gets released and people see it. It's already tainted by that. You know, it, it's already got yep. something working against it. It, it just it's yeah, because like, everybody's going to be like, oh, isn't that the movie that got scrapped? I don't want to see yeah, that. I don't want to pay money yeah, for that. Exactly. They've already imposed the stigma upon that movie. So, I mean, that's why I think that, you know, they just should throw out what they got and just start over. I mean, they I mean, have DC growing up D like, yeah, Marvel was great. And the X-Men were huge, huge. But. I didn't hear that much about Iron Man. It was Superman and Batman, The Flash, the whole Justice League. Like, DC is massive if they, they do it right. There's more characters than Batman. Well, <laughs> yeah, but they're all they're all dark and brooding and Well, I mean, you got someone like Except for the Flash. You got someone like Green Lantern. You oh, got yeah, Green right. Arrow. You've got uh Martian Manhunter. You, there's there's the, so many he's great green characters. Too. Does your, They're does all your green. Hate him? I just wanted to talk about the green characters. That's all. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, no, you, you've you got need to follow up with your mom and find out why she don't like She Hulk. Yeah, yeah. it's bothering <laughs> me. <laughs> I really want to find out. Maybe get her on the show and be like, "Mom, can you explain this?" <laughs> that would um, be great. She'd just tell you to shut up and hang up on us. Yeah, that would be that would be accurate. <laughs> and then she would com- she would complain about how you know certain people in politics should not be in politics. We're going to keep that out <laughs> of yeah, uh, the whole segment. Yeah. Pull up, pull uh, up. Uh, so <laughs> let's uh, pull up. Uh, let's talk about something happening tomorrow. We're getting some hot D, Dan. Getting some hot uh, D. You don't, you have no reference for that. I am so happy. I, I have, I have no idea. So except it, the fact that I'm, I think all of tomorrow, I'm just going to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so, uh, unless hot, you're talking about dessert. So George R. R. Martin refers to house of the dragon as hot D. I, sh- I kid you not. Hot D. <laughs> yep. And, uh, it is wow. releasing the first episodes releasing tomorrow. Uh, I plan to do a little watch group, uh, with Tyler and Nadine, uh, his girlfriend. And, uh, I am excited as all can be <laughs> to watch some hot D <laughs> that, that, that sounds awesome. I might, I might get down on some of that hot D. Yeah. Get on that hot D. Yeah. I, I've been, uh, obsessed with the world George R. R. Martin created the song of ice and fire series read all the books, uh, even the fire and blood books. And what I really loved about the books is that even though I know some of the uh, deaths and the way things play out, there's a lot of little things that are left up as a mystery that will be revealed, I'm sure, in the show. So that's hmm. exciting. I And I, I know the reviews came out, I think, yesterday. And for the most part there's it's mostly positive so i i'm excited i think it's going to be a good time i i'm really happy that they're continuing the world of game of thrones because even though the end of the show didn't go as well as some might wanted i think there's a i thought it was i thought it was great i i I think it was rushed I think it was rushed. Oh, it definitely was. Don't get me wrong. It definitely was. But I didn't hate it. I, I thought, I thought, okay, well, they, what happened is they ran out of material and did the best they could with nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and besides the, you know, bullet points. So I think it, it's an unfortunate side effect of not having the books as reference. Yeah. So I, I, and I absolutely agree with that. Yeah. But this this is interesting because the book is already released. Everything for the Dance of Dragons, which is this w- the war between the Targaryens that happens, has already been written. It's already done. There's n- unless they go further into the future, which even then there's a second volume coming out that'll probably be released before that. Um, they could go. I I would suspect three to four seasons. I would say three seasons of just this timeline alone, just trying to get through the Dance of Dragons. So that's I'm, fascinating. I, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. And uh, yeah, if you happen to watch it and you're a listener, please chime in and tell us what you thought. Okay, uh, I think we're gonna get this wrapped up. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, I, th- I think it's it's about that time to you know. Oh, I, got, on. I got stuff to do. I, I've got video games to play. I've got movies to watch. I've got books <laughs> to read. I don't have all the time in the world to sit here and talk to you people. And I, uh, I ain't got nothing. I I, I, <laughs> uh, uh, Dan, where can people? Oh, wow. Uh, Dan, where can yeah, people? F- <laughs> Dan, where can people find you online? They can find me on Instagram at Theodore Bear Dog. Nice. Uh, that's that's my Insta handle. Uh, they nice. can also find me on Facebook at Theodore Bear Dog as well. How about wow. you, Paul? How can people find you? I can be found at Paul Allen Dixon. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, uh, the Facebooks, the works. I'm all over the place. Uh, something else I want to point out is Film Vets now has a YouTube channel. We have an Instagram. Woo-hoo! We have a yep we are we're moving up in the world uh so you can also 
uh, listen there, but also, you know, the main sources, uh, Google podcast and Apple, uh, we're trying to, uh, you know, get more listeners. Uh, so please spread the word. Uh, we're definitely wanting more veterans. Uh, we've had a couple of people reach out, so I'm, I'm excited to sh- have some guests on the show to, uh, showcase their work and their life. And, uh, yeah, I'm I'm really excited for the future of this, and I'm so glad you came along to do this with me, Dan. Thank you. Absolutely, I would want to be anywhere else. Awesome, dude. Uh, oh, and our sign off. Thank you for your service, Dan. No, thank you for your service. Boom. All right. 